Let's see if this goes anywhere. Hi guys. How you going? Um, I'm in Ireland right now. I'm in Dublin. I got to my hotel a couple of hours ago. I'm taking a solo vacation um, because I think it's a big milestone in a young adult's life. Also, my roommate's also taking a solo vacation and I'm nothing if not the most jealous person ever. So because she's doing it, I'm doing it too. I have to go out and go to a drugstore because I need to get a nail file and some band-aids. Um, and I have to eat lunch at some point. It's 3.20 in the afternoon, but for me, let's see what time it is in the, in the beautiful city of Boston. It is 10.20 at night in Boston. It's almost bedtime. I felt so sleepy all day. I had a horrible flight. <laughs> I mean, the flight itself was fine. It was horrible because I am 5'11 and I was in basic economy, so you do the math. I've been trying to figure out the safe in my room. I've just been putting random objects in it and typing in the same code over and over again and watching the door open. I want to put my laptop and stuff in there when I leave the room but I'm afraid something will happen with the safe. I don't be able to open it again. So right now there is a little sleeve of instant coffee in there that is uh, my rehearsal laptop. I just know as soon as I try to put something like actually significant in there, it's gonna be like, mm, you can't open me. Do you guys want a tour? That's my, <laughs> that's my security system. Um, I do not know how to use an iron. I have clothes here. Yeah, this is where I'm keeping my makeup. I have actually been doing something I never do and putting my clothes away. My bags are up there. We have Miss Marameco. Natch, love her. I always travel with my Marameco bag. And then for a little bag, I have this purse because my boots are also red. They're a different shade of red leather, but I feel like nobody will be able to tell. I can't film myself because I'm not wearing pants the safe in question. You know what, let's, let's see. Let's try something a little bit more higher stakes. <laughs> I'm gonna put my meds in there. Nar, just kidding. Um, I'm going to put, oh my God. I'm gonna put this cup in here. Oh my God. Oh my God, Never mind. I broke, <laughs> Okay, okay. Mm. This is time passing. Pretend time is passing. Okay, I'm back in the room. Time to take my laptop out of the safe. Okay. Wow, my laptop, so safe and sound. My hair is such an interesting shape from the series of naps I've taken. So yeah, I'm gonna make myself look a little bit less like I've been napping for two hours. By the way, I got here 8.45 this morning, our plane got to the tarmac. I was like desperately hoping something would delay us by several hours because online when I booked my hotel room, they were like, hey girl, just so you know, Check-in time is 4 p.m. And when I made this reservation back in like September, I was like, oh, that's fine. Like I'll drop off my luggage and then I'll just cavort around the city. And then when the plane landed, I was like, if I cannot go immediately from this airport into a bed, I will do something illegal. I cheerfully deplaned, I went through immigration and I went down to the buses. I looked at a map of bus lines and I found that the stop closest to my hotel. I'm sorry, I'm like so... <laughs> yeah, so anyway, uh, like, good lord, I should have brought my tripod. The stop closest to my hotel was called Eden Key and I felt really superior because I know how to pronounce the word key and I know it's not quay. And I know that because of all the influencers that did brand uh, ads for Key Australia, the sunglass brand in 2018. It's the only reason I know how to say that word. So I got a big kick out of being like, I'm going to Eden Key to anyone who asked me what my stop was. So I got off and I got my bag and I like very casually looked at Google Maps on <laughs> my phone. Here's a fun fact that I sure is not gonna come back to bite me in the ass on this trip. I'm really bad at reading maps. And lo and behold, I like crossed the street along the river and a girl starts walking next to me and is giving me that look that people give me when they know who I am. And she was like, 
I'm not gonna do her accent, obviously, I'm not a monster. She's like, do I watch her on TikTok? And I was like, probably. And her name was Sarah, she's incredibly sweet. She gave me some advice on places to go. Um, and I told her my plans and she was very kind and it was wonderful meeting her. And I called my mommy and I was like, hey mom, I'm famous. And I kept walking, I did not get lost on the way to my hotel. It was literally walking in a straight line and then taking one turn, but I did not get asked. I checked in and I paid $4 trillion <laughs> for my room. I was like, hey, I know that it's too early to check in, but like, you know, da 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 da. And after I like signed everything and I put down my passport number, the concierge was like, well, actually we have a room so we can check you in right now. And I was like, ah, thank you, oh my God. I was like about to cry with relief because as I mentioned, I was very sleepy and tired. She gives me my cards and tell me, tells me where my room is and where the lifts are. Lifts, listen to me. Uh, talking like someone whose passport isn't blue. <laughs> I get it to my room, I get it in my room, my room. It's very small and cute and it's where I have my satin pillowcase on because of course I do. I'm prepared for everything. Ow. I have the nascent stages of a blister forming on my foot. So I got it. That's why I got to get band-aids. But that is my first check-in from the beautiful city of Dublin. We'll see where this little trip takes me. Okay, I've changed and now I'm off to find a pharmacy. I'm pretty sure there's a Boots right around the corner, which I'm really excited about because I haven't been to Boots since I was in London. So let's go. Never mind. I'm going back to my room because it's raining and I forgot my umbrella. Absolutely gorgeous evening here in Dublin. It's just, it's incredible out here, really guys. I got very creepily propositioned by an older guy earlier and he was like, I can't quite place where you're from. East Africa? And I was like, I get that a lot, I'm Armenian. And he was like, Armenians, they're the most beautiful people in the world. Has anyone ever, did you know that? And I was like, I mean, using myself as an example, that tracks, yeah. And he was like, oh, they're here. And I was like, you know, weak-ish. And um, he was like, oh, listen, I'm going to be honest with you. We're like two ships passing in the night. I want to have an affair. And I was like, I have to meet someone for dinner. And he like kind of held onto my hand and kept talking and I was like, I really have to go. <laughs> and then I uh, fled into a mall, Alach Shopping Center, I believe it was called. Shout out to you for being near where I was <laughs> and giving me an escape route. I needed to buy Emery boards. Thank you, Lloyd's Pharmacy. I need to buy some plasters. <laughs> Let's go. I had to get chocolate almonds because of course I did. I am so tired. I am so tired. It's 19 o'clock, guys. <laughs> I also bought some hyaluronic acid because I couldn't bring mine because it was too big. I'm not funny right now because I want to go to sleep. But hi, wow, my skin looks gorgeous. I wanna keep talking, but I don't have anything to say. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Oh my goodness, it's so windy. I was gonna get my hair braided before I came here and I missed the window to book with my braider. So now I'm just at the mercy of the elements. I went to a bookstore. I sort of was just wondering, I wanted to try to get to Grafton Street because my stepsister, who spent a lot of time in Dublin, told me that it was good for shopping. I got distracted going into Trinity's campus. I had this delusion of grandeur of going to see the Book of Kells. And so I spent like 10 minutes logging into the Wi-Fi there, only to find out that the tickets for the Book of Kells are like 18 euros and I was like, no, girl, I don't need to go see it that bad. I might go see it later. Also, I went by the Whiskey Museum. I might go in there at some point and I almost went to the National Gallery. But here's the thing. I saw my reflection in a window after walking by a group of Trinity students who were giggling. They probably weren't giggling at me, but it felt like they were. I saw what it looked like and I was like, oh, I can't go anywhere. I have to go back to the hotel. So I turned and started walking in the direction of the hotel. I had wanted to go to a little bookstore and I needed to get food. 
So I was like, I don't really know where to go for that. Like I had passed a bookstore, but it wasn't that nice. Anyway, I'm walking and I spot out of the corner of my eye a little blue building that says books upstairs. And it said it had a cafe. And I was like, oh my God, two birds, one stone. Immediately go upstairs to the cafe and I ask the cashier or the barista, you guys don't happen to have a washroom, do you? I've been saying washroom so people think I'm Canadian. And she was like, yeah, we do, it's all the way upstairs. Two additional flights upstairs. I get up, I'm huffing and puffing. I'm wearing a leather coat. I'm wearing these big boots. I sort of just smush my hair down with some water and like go back down. Before I went up to the bathroom, I sort of breathlessly ordered a bottle of water and a cheese toasty. I noticed a sign on my way up to the cafe that said, we don't have any Wi-Fi. This is a place for talking and reading and whatever. And I was like, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I came prepared because you know what I brought with me to Dublin for situations exactly like this? A book. Yeah. I started reading it last night at the restaurant when I was eating dinner alone. I'm 34 pages into this some bitch. I have absolutely no idea what's going on. But from an outside perspective, I absolutely do. And that's what matters. So I'm sitting at this little round table surrounded by intellectuals and Trinity students. The sun is streaming in through the windows. I didn't take a picture of the inside of the cafe because it was really small and there, you know, I didn't want to like make a spectacle of myself, but it was so cute. The cheese toasty was so good. It had this like balsamic jam. The bread was so perfectly toasted and so good. The only problem was that it had these big old sprigs of rosemary in it. I love the taste of rosemary when it's properly mixed into things. I don't just throw fresh sprigs of rosemary into what I'm cooking because when you eat it, it sort of feels like you're eating artisanal pine needles. Other than the copious amounts of rosemary that I kept biting into, delicious sandwich. I did have to start pulling pieces of rosemary out, but I read my book for a little while and then I went downstairs to the store. As I was leaving, there was a, sh a shift change and like a different barista server girl came out and she had these great velvet pants on and like Doc Martens, she looked amazing. And as I was leaving, do you know what she said to me? She complimented my dress. Now here's the thing about this dress. Here's the thing about this dress I'm wearing. I've made an alteration to it. I added in this ribbon in the back, which means that now anytime anyone compliments me on it, I get to talk about that. So I had like a nice little conversation with this girl. Where I was like, oh yeah, I had to add these ribbons because it was falling off of my shoulders. She called me a thrifty queen. And she was like, it's very impressive that you were able to like, seamstress these things. And I was like, well, actually I took the ribbons out of another dress. They were the sleeve straps of a, they were the sleeve straps of a dress that I outgrew. That's when she called me a thrifty queen. But we had like this adorable conversation and I go downstairs and I'm looking at the books. And then I went into the side room with more books and she was there too. I noticed there was a sign in the side room that said that they had secondhand books upstairs. So I asked if I could leave the books I was already gonna buy with her and she said yes. And I went upstairs, girl, I'm gonna put in some pictures of the pictures that I took in this room. I, there was no one else in there. So I did a little bit of a self photo shoot. The sun streaming in stacks of ancient books about wars and history and Ireland. Floor to ceiling, there was this section that was just Greek plays. It was be I could have spent like a year in there. So I went down and I bought the books that I bought that I had selected and I complimented the another one of the cashiers. I was like, this place is so cute. And I told her that I was only in there because the wind had ruined my hair. And she said, cheers, which I think is so charming. Here's what I bought at the bookstore. My roommate has a ton of wall art and she loves cards and things like this. So I got her some blank cards that she could either send to someone or put on the wall. But these colors really reminded me of her style. So I got her these. I got her this book of poetry by Irish women called Washing Windows. The other gift from her that I bought is kind of an inside joke. I got her this really cute copy of The Gift of the Magi by O. Henry. The reason I bought this is because she and I have this running joke where anytime there's, it's hard to describe. Basically, anytime there's any sort of like silly coincidence in something we're watching or something we doing, we're doing, 
she says, this is just like the gift of the Magi. Because there was this one time we were having this one conversation, I literally don't even remember, where she said that genuinely, and I sort of paused and I was like, no, it's not. What are you talking about? That's insane. Um, terrible explanation, but when I saw this, I was like, I can't not get this for her. And then I got myself one of these cute little hardcover books too. I got a copy of Street Haunting by Virginia Woolf. I've never read any Virginia Woolf, but I want to be smarter. And also this is way smaller than this book, so now I can carry this one around whenever I need to have a book. So, great. That's what I bought. I'm very excited to spend even more money. Joke's on me because the literal very next thing I did was actually free. I decided to take the advice of the follower of mine that I met on the bridge over the Liffey and visit the National Gallery because the galleries are free. I was really excited because I knew exactly how to get here. The first thing I did was see this absolutely beautiful piece of stained glass. The blue here was like absolutely transfixing. I stared at it for a really, really long time. Um, and you'll see in a second as I'm walking away that I start to tear up a little bit. I think just being from Boston made me a little bit Catholic by proximity. Then I walked into this room with very pleasant powder blue walls. I apologize for pointing my camera at the floor. I'm really shy about recording in public. And I was trying not to make a spectacle of myself. This landscape is so beautiful. I wanted to stare at it forever. All of these landscapes are really gorgeous. I felt really serene in this room. I'm just gonna probably play some nice soothing music so you can have the same experience that I did. Look at these reds. Look at the shading. Look at the floor and my boots. Okay, look at this baby. I love this baby. And she's holding a dog. She's holding a little dog. And then there's another baby. That's me. It's me when I wake up in the morning. I love art, you guys. Then I walked into this grand room. I wish the piano had been uncovered because I think it would have made it look like a little bit glossier, but whatever. I was wearing the loudest shoes ever. I felt really bad because all of my footsteps were super loud and echoey and I thought I was gonna get kicked out. So I was basically tiptoeing through all of the rooms I was in. Then it was time to head upstairs to the portrait gallery. And I really felt like I was in my vlogging bag here. I was like, this is gonna be such a cool shot. Uh, especially if I let my thumb hover over the camera, that's great. I loved how all of these rooms looked as I walked through them. And that's why I took this video, but my beastly boot clomping is even worse here. I loved the pink here. That's why I lingered on this picture. I thought it was a really beautiful shade of pink on this garment. And then also this dog. <laughs> I found myself alone in an area of the National Gallery, so I took this opportunity to make a fit check. God, this is so self-indulgent. I'd be angrier at myself about it if I didn't look so good in this outfit. Then I walked back to my hotel. I saw some swans on the Liffey and there were all these lights in the city. And this is also really short because I was afraid that someone was gonna knock my phone out of my hands into the river. But yay, O'Connell Street, woo, Dublin. I love the buses, I love the double-decker buses. I did not ride any of them. This is a really stupid shot I filmed to show how tired I was. Oh, it's over. One thing about me is that my paranoia is always correct. Because do you remember earlier in this vlog when I said that I was nervous about using the safe? Because I was certain that I was gonna put my laptop in there and then it was gonna put itself on some bullshit and not work. Do you remember when I said that exactly? Well, guess what? I just typed in the code that I have been using the entire time for my little test runs where I put like a mug in there or a pen in there. Guess what happened? It wouldn't take the code. I tried it three times and then it said error and started beeping incredibly loudly for like a single suspended minute. And I thought I was gonna have to call downstairs and then it stopped. But this is exactly why I didn't put my computer in there and I did not put my camera in there. 
I was about to turn around and film my camera, forgetting that I am using it. <laughs> a genius. No weapon formed against me can prosper, and I just think that's crazy. <laughs> Today is Friday. It's late. I'm getting a really late start. It's already 13, 19. I'm getting ready to go to the Irish Whiskey Museum. But before then, I'm gonna go to Nando's. I've been making cheeky Nando's jokes since like 2014 and I finally get to try Nando's. I'm gonna walk over, put in my order, then I'm gonna eat, then I'm gonna go to the museum because it's open until like 10 at night, which is very cool. But tomorrow, let me tell you what's gonna happen tomorrow. Tomorrow's so exciting. Um, I'm going on a day long bus tour. We're going to the Cliffs of Moher, Moher, I should learn how to pronounce that before I go. And we're going to Galway. And here's the thing, I wanted to go to Galway and my mom wanted me to go to the cliffs. And I was like, oh yeah, I'll like figure out how to get there. Uh, Galway is fully on the other side of the country, which I knew, I knew it was, it was like three hours away. One of my coworkers studied abroad there and was like, oh, it's so beautiful. It's like so charming. Dublin, eh. and I was like, okay, I am going there. So like maybe not too much on my girl Dublin. I was like, I, maybe I won't go to Galway because like, I don't know how I'm gonna swing that basically. And then I remembered before I left, my mom had mentioned a bus tour company to me called Wild Rover Tours. And I like looked back in our text to find it. I looked it up. It's only like $70 and it leaves tomorrow at 6.55 AM from the Hotel Rio. Now guess who is staying functionally across the street from that hotel? Me, bitch. The Academy Plaza is like on the next corner. I literally ate dinner at that hotel last night. It's so perfect. And it drops off at another hotel in like the Dublin one area where I'm staying, like near the spire. It takes like two minutes to walk from that hotel. It drops, it picks up at 6.55 and it drops off at 8 p.m. And it's the whole day and it was $70 and it's exactly where I wanna go. And I'm so amped. I looked into going to the Jameson distillery. The reason I'm gonna do the whiskey museum instead is because the all of the things you could do at the distillery, according to the website, were like really short and kind of expensive. I don't know. I just want a big burly Irishman to sort of throw me around the whiskey barrels, which I don't know if that's an experience that you can pay for. Well, it sounds like an experience you can pay for, but you know, not just through the website. I'm gonna figure out this Nando's order and I'm gonna start my little afternoon in the city and then try not to vibrate with excitement to art about tomorrow. If I fall into the Atlantic Ocean and no one ever sees this video, whoops. I really like Dublin. I really like it here. Here's what I gotta do. I gotta like go to one of the networking events that my business school has, find someone who works for Salesforce and then just work at the Salesforce office here in Dublin. Do I wanna work for Salesforce? Not particularly, but I'm getting the chicken butterfly because it seems the easiest to eat on the fly. I'm kind of stumped with the spice level because there's extra hot and hot. I have a pretty high spice tolerance, but I also don't want to like hurt myself. I think we'll play it safe and just do hot. Ooh, hmm. Just go crazy, get the peas. What's macho about the peas, I wonder. I wound up just eating at Nando's and this was so good that I forgot to record it until I was already halfway done. This was absolutely delicious. After I ate on my way to the museum, I stopped at this little jewelry store called Rhinestones, which was so cute. And of course I bought expensive jewelry, obviously. Then it was time for my tour at the museum and I didn't film anything in here because there were only like five of us in the group and it would have been really awkward. And then on my way back down afterwards, I almost fell down the staircase because I was a little drunk. <laughs> Earlier in the day, I passed by this adorable restaurant called appropriately Pink Restaurant. So I decided to eat dinner here. And this is like if the word girl boss was a restaurant. This place is so cute. I had kind of a headache, so I didn't spend a ton of time here, but um, I loved sitting in this restaurant. It made me feel very girly and feminine. <laughs> it's the crack of dawn right now because I'm getting a bus to go over the cliffs of Mar. I'm very excited. <laughs> I was gonna say it's super quiet, but it's not really that quiet. There's still stuff going on. It's a busy city here. And so began my cross-country journey to Galway and the Cliffs of Moher. As I mentioned, I did this tour with Wild Rover Tours, and I had a very charming and entertaining tour guide named Patrick, who intermittently gave us details about Ireland's history and what we were seeing as we passed, which was mostly trees, but occasionally other stuff. We were 
will be coming by Bunratty Castle. I've been to medieval balls there. It's an old 19th century castle created during the Viking period. It's a fantastic place on the right, and there's a pub there. I was there last year, two lovely pints of Guinness. We stopped halfway through at the Barack Obama Rest Stop Center near the town of Moneygall, and they had this exhibit upstairs about Ireland's relationship with US presidents. So we learned about President Kennedy, uh, some guy, I don't know, President Clinton, and of course, President Obama. And this was a really interesting experience because I think I'd heard about this center before, but I didn't actually know that it was real. But um, this was a very charming place to go. I bought a packaged BLT here on the softest, whitest bread I've ever tasted. About the fairies. So, guys, we have a really difficult term. So, guys and girls, of course, if we can give Warren some encouragement, you'll see the old farmers out there. This is called the kissing wall. You see it just here? It has finally been... You see it where some of the coaches have hit the wall. Wow, well done, hip hip! <laughs> Good man, Warren, that's brilliant. I haven't seen drivers get through it that quick. Well done. Don't tell the other drivers if you're on another tour, everybody. You'll be getting me in trouble. I'm pretty sure I had nothing less than a true out-of-body spiritual experience here at the Cliffs of Moher. I'm just gonna let them speak for themselves. Uh, cause oh my god, dude. This was, like, one of the most incredible things I've ever seen. The hand to God, point blank period. After the cliffs, it was back on the bus to head up north to Galway, and I feel like I really only saw a teeny tiny sliver of this city, and I don't feel like I really got everything that Galway has to offer, so this is definitely some place I'd love to go back to at some point. I spent most of my couple of hours in Galway wandering around and eating at a kind of mid-Italian restaurant, but the staff was really nice, so it was okay. I got to speak Italian with them, which always is, feels very validating. Um, I must have looked really stupid taking this shot but it's the past, who cares? I spotted this vintage store called Planet Retro and I was like, yeah, yeah, we're gonna go in here. I didn't film a ton in here because I'm trying really hard to not film people and the store was really small and really crowded, but it was really cool and I ended up buying a really, really beautiful gown that I did not think to record when I was in the store, but I did take a video of it once I got back home in my bedroom.
cute. Anyway, <laughs> after that, I noticed that the sun was setting really beautifully, so I decided to walk towards the water so I could get a better shot of the sunset. And this was a really satisfying ending to what turned out to be a really beautiful, breathtaking day. I am really proud of myself for taking this trip. I was absolutely terrified to go on it, and I almost didn't. Like, my mom brought it up with me. She was like, you know, you don't have to go. And I was like, yes, I do. I bought the tickets already. I bought the hotel. I bought everything. And I'm really glad I did. This was kind of why I wanted to do this. I wanted to have really beautiful grounding moments in a place far away from home. And that's exactly what I got to do here. And I really feel like now I have the confidence to do more solo travel. I don't know where I want to go next, but I know I want to go somewhere next. This was a really wonderful experience for me. And I am so proud of myself. And I'm so, so grateful that I decided to do this. Burger story. Today is Sunday, it's the 27th, it's the last full day. I fly out tomorrow afternoon. I don't know, I feel like kind of anxious today. I think I'm just nervous about the flight tomorrow and like getting to the airport and da 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 da. My pants are hanging up here because I wore these to the cliffs yesterday and I got them super muddy. So last night I gave them a real quick wash in the bathtub and so they're just hanging up to dry still. I'm gonna go to this souvenir store called Seasons of Ireland to get myself a corny tourist t-shirt to wear on the plane tomorrow. I'm gonna go to Sweeney's Pharmacy. Like I'm ready for the trip to be over. I like can never travel for very long because I get super homesick really quickly. I'm also like kind of sniffly. I think my allergies have finally caught up to the fact that I'm traveling. Usually when I fly, it's like as soon as I get off the plane, my sinuses are like, but this time I've been fine the whole week. And then today they're like, oh, hi. Has your nose not been running this whole time? That's crazy. Mind if I cut in? I decided to begin my last afternoon in the city by taking a pleasant stroll down the River Liffey before making the horrifying error of trying to walk up Grafton Street to get to that souvenir store I mentioned. And it was so bright and sunny and the sunlight was reflecting off of the ground because it had rained and I couldn't see a goddamn thing. After fighting through hordes of people, I eventually was able to buy my shirt and I decided to keep walking because it turned into such a nice day and I just kept rounding corners and I eventually happened upon the National Library of Ireland and the Archaeology Museum and I decided to go into the museum and take some pictures of my roommate who loves stuff like this. <laughs> I wound up accidentally wandering into an exhibit about bog bodies. I came in through the other side where it wasn't clear that that's what it was about and it was a huge downer. After absolutely bawling out at the museum's gift shop, I decided to wander into Marion Square Park to read my book for a little while before going over to Sweeney's Pharmacy. I'm living on borrowed time. No one's walking past me right now. I got new earrings at the Museum of Archaeology. I swear to God, if anybody sees me filming myself talking to my phone in this beautiful, lovely little green space, I will melt into the ground like the witch in the Wizard of Oz. Five almond chunks in my teeth. Don't tell me. I told you not to tell me. Why do I not just sit in a park on Twitter when I'm in Boston? I could do that. I don't know why I always feel like I have to bring a book with me. I have a book. I bought a Virginia Woolf book because I was tired of not knowing what Virginia Woolf was. Um, I also was tired of thinking that Virginia Woolf and Agatha Christie were the same person. I don't know why I thought that. I also think I thought Agatha Christie wrote Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. I also definitely thought both of them were alive in like the 60s. I don't know where I went wrong. You know what I mean? Before leaving the park, I made sure to befriend at least one chubby little Those magpie. Are so pretty. Hi, pretty bird. <laughs> then it was off to the pharmacy, and truly, I think that this was one of my favorite experiences I had in the city of Dublin. Tell us more about it, me from last month. <laughs> it's actually really lovely. The shopkeeper sang us a song in Gaelic, it was me and two Greek tourists, and he let me read a bit from a copy. 
he had Ulysses in Italian. We had a little conversation in Italian, and he talked about how he'd been to Trieste and Verona to see an opera. It was a teeny tiny shop. I bought two lemon soaps, like in Ulysses. What a delightful place. I'm so glad I went. And he gave us whiskey to try. He asked if we'd had any Irish whiskey. And I was like, yeah, but I'm always down to have some more. And then he gave us a little shot of writer's tears. What a nice afternoon. After the pharmacy, I resumed my wandering and taking random turns, and I happened upon the greatest thing that I've ever seen, which was a prêt-à-manger. I love Pret, and I've been heartbroken ever since they closed all the locations in Boston, so I made an absolute beeline to this place. I bought a sparkling apple juice and a croissant and a tuna sandwich, and here I am triumphantly walking back to my hotel with my croissant, and I was so happy, I was so delighted. And that was my trip. I laid low for the rest of the night and finished packing, and this is me getting ready to leave my hotel the following day for my flight. Anyway. Finally, this is me exhibiting incredible amounts of self-restraint at the Dublin airport duty-free. I only bought three lip glosses at Boots. Thanks for watching. Bye.